The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. One of the things that I just absolutely love about scripture is that the stories we read and hear are our stories. They are about us and tell us so much about our identity as human beings. And today's reading is very enlightening. In our first reading from Numbers, we find that Moses is truly overwhelmed and weary as he tries to lead this throng of Israelites through the desert. And as he complains to God about his heavy workload, we find that God is sympathetic to Moses. God graciously responds with a proposal that will take some of the burden off Moses by having others share the load. And I think, wow, what a concept. Well, this is a great idea, but when God takes some of the spirit that was on Moses and places it on 70 chosen elders, some of that spirit spills over onto two other men, Eldad and Medad. Then, When these two other men begin to prophesy, oh my, envy, self-ambition, and jealousy break out among Joshua and the rest of the 70 because these other two men were not part of that chosen inner circle of 70. And what is so fascinating is that rather than stop these two other men, Moses says with certainty that he wishes all God's people would be filled with such a spirit. Then in today's gospel reading, we hear a story that is rather similar. John comes rushing up to Jesus in a panic and all out of breath. He proclaims, teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he's not one of us. Again, oh my. 
Eldad, Medad, John, and the other disciples are so much like us. People are in crisis. There is so much to be done and help is needed. Yet when help comes, people complain because the help is not the right help. You know, they are not people we know and trust. They are not properly authorized, credentialed people who look and act like us. You see, the problem is that the spirit has broken out and now it cannot be controlled. Those in the inner circle, the club or the clique, are put out because someone outside that circle is also able to use God's gifts and that person is using them without the proper credentials. The writer of Mark's gospel tells us the disciples are upset because this other guy who isn't one of the 12 is casting out demons. They can't control him and he must be stopped. So Jesus, never one to be impressed with titles or credentials, says in effect, Look, leave him alone. We need all the help we can get. I don't care if he is a part of our little group or not. Look at what he is doing, not at the color of his skin, the language he is speaking, his sexual preference, or his politics. Is he doing good? Is he living a kind, helpful, Life of love. That's all I want. We need more people like that. Whoever is not against me is for me. If he's not an enemy, he's an ally. Jesus then talks about stumbling blocks. And in a matter of speaking, tells the disciples and each one of us to look at the stumbling blocks we place in front of ourselves and in front of others. He is telling us to look at the perverse pleasure we take in excluding people who live, believe, worship, serve, and practice their faith differently than we do. Look at how smug and superior we often feel when our brothers and sisters fail. Look at how insecure and tenuous our own faith must be if its survival depends on our dismantling someone else's. In this present age, Jesus' response is very helpful because if ever the church needs more eldads and me dads and outsiders, it is now. Quite honestly, those of us clinging to the way things have always been done, and those who cling to rules and rubrics that exclude regarding things like worship leadership or any other aspect of church and ministry are killing the church. We have far too often become the stumbling blocks of which Jesus speaks. Far too often, we tend to think that whoever is not for us is against us. It is so much easier that way. Far too often, we smugly think, I am not like one of them. We so readily draw circles around ourselves and others so that we can better distinguish ourselves versus all others and thereby justify who we are and who we are not. You know, I'm not one of those Republicans, or I'm not one of those Democrats. I'm not one of those conservatives, or I'm not one of those liberals. I am not one of those Baptists, or one of those Episcopalians, or one of those Catholics, or one of those fundamentalists, or one of those Muslims. I am not one of those whom I believe is not saved. Oh yes, we do draw our circles, 
But we should really understand that wherever we draw that circle, Jesus is going to be standing outside the circle with a great number of people who we might well think are not for Jesus at all. Quite frankly, at the heart of our human struggle as we live in relationship to others is our need to define ourselves as who we are not. And keeping categories of them and us means we do not have to leave what is familiar and comfortable, and we do not have to go to a place that is somewhat scary. As we think about our life in this present culture, life that is bursting at the seams with division, differences, and even hatred, as people place others in categories of us versus them. The many problems we face are so complex. However, the starting point as we work for healing means going beyond our circles, moving beyond the categories of us and them. These categories are truly stumbling blocks. The starting point is that place where we begin entering into relationship with others, loving others as they are, and living in such a way that we truly love and care for our neighbors. So I ask you this, what would it be like if the children of God truly helped each other succeed? Just imagine, what it would be like if Pentecostal Christians began removing stumbling blocks for the liturgical Christians, and Lutherans began removing stumbling blocks for charismatic Christians, and Christians began removing the stumbling blocks for Muslims. Just imagine what it would be like if liberals began clearing paths for the conservatives, and conservatives began clearing paths for liberals, and the difference that would make in people's daily lives. Just imagine what the world would be like if the insiders befriended the outsiders. Just what would happen if we expanded the circle, lengthened the table, and decided to simply feast together? We would be path clearers and stumbling block removers. We would be healers and exorcists, and no little one would ever lose her way again because of us. Living in relationship with all types of people we would consider other was a constant starting point for Jesus. When the disciples came complaining about this other person casting out evil spirits in Jesus' name, Jesus said, don't stop them. Whoever is not against us is for us. You see, for Christians, the starting point is never about who we are not. It is always about who we are. And who we are is the baptized, broken, but graciously and abundantly loved body of Christ. There is no need to justify who we are because we have been named and claimed by a God of love. We have been given a place, a status, and a home within that gracious, unending, all-encompassing love of God. And the Jesus we know died not only for us, but for the entire world. We have already been raised to new life that is not simply about us, but life for the entire world. And in that love, there is no distinction. Know us and know them. So I say, gracious God, break into our lives and bring it on. Break into our lives and bring those we consider other. Bring others into our lives and take us into their lives. 
Help us to let go of our fear and move beyond our self-imposed circles and categories. Yes, this will take us to places where we will feel uncomfortable and unsettled. And yes, this will take us to places that will likely make life messier than we might like, because we will have to give up our need to control. But it is truly the deeper place where we'll be, we will find all are embraced and held in God's love. Amen. <laughs>